So I had an idea to build out a quick full stack app. We're going to be leveraging the new Llama 3.2 model. We're going to be using the multimodal 11B model in this example. We're going to be leveraging Grok for this. And then we're going to be building it out with V0 as well as cursor. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to send in a prompt to V0. I'm going to submit this and I'll read it out. So design an interactive interface with the following requirements. We're going to have an image input. We're going to have our text prompt. And then finally, we're going to have an area where we output the display on the right hand side. Here we have a simple interface where we'll be able to drag an image, put in our prompt and process the image. I'm going to add to code base here. We're going to copy this button. Now that we have the starting point of our application, I'm going to go over to cursor and I'm going to create a new next project here. And then once it's all set up, we can just paste in that command that we got from V0. It's going to create a component folder, install everything that it needs for Shad CNUI. The first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to clean up this file here. Well, I'm just going to create a class with font sans again, and then we're going to add in this component. And then finally, we're just going to import it here as well. All right, so now that we have that, we can open up our development server and we should see everything that we just set up all here. We see a basic interface. All right, so now that I have this, I'm gonna go over to Grok. And if you haven't used their playground before, it's really intuitive to use. You can upload your image here. You can even put in a message. You can say something like, hello world. And then if you have the particular model that you wanna use, so say the 11 billion parameter model here, you can just click view code and it will give you the example of what you've been doing within the playground. What we're gonna do, we're gonna copy this, and then we're gonna open up what's called the composer within cursor. What I can do here is I can add in the context for it to focus on the image interface file, create a backend route with the following logic, connect the submission of the text and image to the UI. Let's use app router. Finally, or the image to base 64 to submit that within the URL key. The great thing with the composer is it can create files for you and it can also edit existing ones. Here, it created the backend logic for the Next.js route, leveraging the example from the playground within Grok. And then it bound that created backend logic to the pre existing component here. So here we see the handle submit is correctly referencing the route that we had within this file. And then it even went as far as actually putting in the .env.local where we're going to be putting the API key. Before moving on, I want to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problems, making it six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Brilliant helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not just memorization. It develops a daily learning habit, building real world knowledge in just minutes a day through fun, interactive lessons. One course I'm enjoying is How LLMs Work, which is an immersive AI workshop that explains the mechanics of how today's most advanced large language models work. You'll understand how LLMs build vocabulary, choose words, and more. To try Brilliant, they're offering 30 days completely for free. Visit brilliant.org slash developers digest to start your free trial. You'll also get 20% off your annual subscription if you choose to become a member. And you can find the link within the video description. And now let's get back to building the app. You can open up the .env.local. And then what you can do is you can just grab your API key from Grok. So you can just click API keys, generate a key, and then you can paste it in right after the Grok API key here. You can save out your environment variable. And now if we just look through our files here, we see the image interface. The one thing to be mindful of is always look for errors, whether you're using AI or not. Within cursor or VS code, there is the errors tab here. If you're using something like TypeScript, it is super helpful to detect if you have errors. Here we do, within the route, we do have to install the Grok SDK here. So I'll just bun install the Grok SDK. Then from here, what we can do is I can just upload an image and I can say, what is this image? I'll click process image. And then we see the image depicts a hot dog with mustard on it. Now we have that. And let's just start to build out the application a little bit more. If we go within the image interface, I'm going to say, I want a simple nav and footer and give the background a linear gradient. So this is just a process where if you're building out a small little application like this, maybe it's a little helper application, or you're just playing around with one of these new models that are coming out here, you can really quickly iterate with something like cursor because with one command, now we have our nav, we have our footer, and then we also have this linear gradient. I'm going to say, I want a black, purple, and blue linear gradient. 
and make the cards in the middle fill the screen top to bottom. So you don't necessarily need to select the whole file either. You can play around with this a little bit. If you're new to cursor, all that you have to do is select the piece of code that you want to edit, click command K, and then with natural language, you can put in what you want to generate. All right, so here is just a really basic image generator. I'm going to put the link within the description of the video if you want to use this as a starting off point to use the new Grok 11B model. The other thing I'm really excited about is the vision capability on the 90B model. This is an example of the text preview, and it does really well at following direction as well as generating codes. So here is just a quick example of an application that I've been working on. It's basically a clone of Claude, as you probably see, but you can see here that it essentially can build out and follow instructions really well. So being able to tie in that image capability alongside being able to use a provider like Grok with that fast inference. So it goes without saying, we're probably gonna see a lot of different fun types of apps, and it's great to see some more multimodal models out there. That's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.